Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss about resolution algorithm. How to find a resolution out of the given knowledge base. So a knowledge base is given, a goal is given, and we want to find uh, using certain rules how we are going to find a resolution out of it, whether the goal is achieved or not. Okay, whether there is a possibility of reaching the goal state or not. And this will be for either a predicate logic or a proportional logic statement. The first step is to take any of the statement, convert that into a corresponding proportional logic statement or a predicate logic statement. And most of the time the goal is given. Okay, so there will be a given proposed goal state that will be given. So we are going to take that goal and we are going to add that to a, uh, we are, it is like a proof by contradiction method. So we take the negation of the goal, add it to the knowledge base, and then we try to derive a resolution graph out of it. Okay, we'll be combining all those existing rules. And uh, finally, we try to derive to a nullified state. So when the contradiction, like whatever the goal that we have taken, if it is really true, then when by adding that contradiction of the rule to the knowledge base will goes to a nullified state. Sometimes it will be proven to a false condition. Okay, in that time, we can say that the taken goal is true. Okay, proof by contradiction method. I'll just explain you with an example. Okay, so here, uh, whatever we are going to man operate on, it will be often uh, CNF structure. It will be often conjecture normal, normal form structure. Okay, the reason is uh, when you have an N number of rules, for example, uh, consider your uh, womb first world problem. Uh, we'll be having a lot of rules generated each and every step when an agent enter into a cave and he explores, start exploring each and every room. So initially in the room when he have entered, there will be no pit in room 1-1, one, one. there will be no pit in, uh, no breeze in 1-1, one, one. there is no stingy smell in 1-1 one, one. and you have a lot and lot of rules added together. So all these rules are true. Okay, so that means when the agent explores a current scenario, he derives certain rule and all those rules are true. So it actually means these rules are connected using an AND connection, conjunction. We have all the rules connected in a conjunctive form. So what we do, we take all the uh, rules that we have discussed so far, like you have an implies biconditional connection and proportional logic connect connectives and proportional and predicate logic, you will be having negation, conjunction, disjunction, implies and biconditional. So this implies and biconditional can be connected, con uh, converted into a conjunction and disjunction. And when you are just combined all those things, we can call it as in CNF form. Okay, so first step in resolution is convert all the uh, rules that are derived into one CNF structure, conjecture normal form. For example, when you have an alpha biconditional beta, this can be written as alpha implies beta and beta implies alpha. Okay, so both the rules are there. So this is your uh, alpha, when you have alpha implies beta, this can be written as negation alpha or beta condition. Okay, so this can be written as alpha implies beta, beta implies alpha, and alpha implies beta can be written as negation alpha or beta. So this is converted into a conjunction and disjunction form. And again, like you have all single literals to be taken into account. So when you have a double negation of alpha can be written as alpha. You have, you have to remember your De Morgan's law. So when I have negation of alpha and beta, this can be written as negation alpha or negation beta. And negation of alpha or beta can be written as negation uh, alpha and negation beta. So these are all the mandatory basic rules. So take any of the given predicate or proportional logic statement, write its corresponding. When you have implies or biconditional, convert that into a CNF structure. Okay. So once after combining that, converting that into a CNF structure, you can go ahead with taking the goal that is needed, take the con uh, negation of it, add that to the knowledge base, and then draw a resolution graph. One example I can show you. Uh, one basic example, uh, we have it in book. Uh, so it is if it is sunny and warm day, we will enjoy. So this is a statement. And you'll have a lot of statement given like this. Okay, so next one is if it is rainy, we will get wet. Get wet. And the third statement is, it is sunny. Fourth statement is, it is warm. And the goal that is needed is whether we will enjoy or not. We will enjoy. If, uh, that is a goal. We have to convert these statements into a 
proportional or a predicate logic statement. So all the statement that we have taken here or a declarative statement that will just have yes or no solution. So it is sunny, it is a warm day, or we will enjoy all a single statement. It will have either true or false statement. And when you want to write in a proportional logic statement for this, like uh, for the statement, if it is sunny and warm, sunny warm and warm can be written as S N W. And if condition, if it is sunny and warm, we will enjoy. We can write a statement like this. And it is if it is rainy, then uh, we will get wet. So already I have used W for warm. I can write it as wet condition here. And it is sunny, S is given, it is warm, W is given. So this is your rule set. Okay, so your knowledge base consists of the rule like S impl and uh, W implies E, R implies wet. So these are all connected using AND condition, S, W. All these rules are true. Whatever is given to us, a uh, set of rules, everything is true. So we are going to add these rules into a knowledge base, but uh, your enjoy, this is your final goal that is needed. And what it is needed, so we have to convert these statement into a CNF structure, conjective normal form. So when I take the statement implies, I can write it as this uh, alpha implies beta can be written as negation alpha or beta. So I can write it as negation S and W or E. And again, you have this negation, right? You have to have a single literal alone. So this can be can, uh, converted using your Demagans law. We can write it as negation S or negation W or E. Okay, and you have R implies uh, wet can be written as negation R or wet. And S is given, W is given. So everything is connected using your AND connection. And what is the next step? We have to take the goal and add the negation of the goal into your knowledge base. So after adding this negation of the goal in your knowledge base, so this is the set of rules that is formed. The next step is we have to find a way of combining these rules and find a solution for it. So my goal is to check whether I enjoy or not. So I take a rule that consists of E. Okay, so I have negation S or negation W or E. And uh, it is also given that negation E is also true, negation E. So this is not possible, right? So we can have that possibility of E or negation E to be true in the same place, not possible. So I take it as negation S or negation W alone the possibility. And it is given that S is also true by combining these two. Whatever is applicable, we take that rule alone. It need not to be that whatever rule that we have written has to be taken out. It's not the condition, okay? Now S and negation S cannot be having in the same place. So I can take it as negation W alone out of it. Now you have already W in your knowledge base. By combining these two, you have this nullify condition. This cannot be proceeded further. So either negation S or negation W or E which should be true. Whereas when you combine all those rules by taking this negation E, you are not able to find a solution out of it. Okay, it goes into a contradiction place. With this, we can prove that the uh, goal that we have taken, this negation E that we have taken is false. So surely we'll be enjoying the day. Okay, so this is how a resolution works. I'll show you another example with the first world problem that we have discussed. I'll just write down the rules that we have already taken into it. Like when an agent explores one comma one, we know that there is no pit in one comma one given, there is no breeze in one comma one, there is no uh, stingy smell in one comma one, all these rules are given. Okay, and uh, we also know that there is, if so there is a breeze, there is no breeze in one comma one actually indicates that there is no pit in 2 comma 1 and there is no pit in 1 comma 2. So this is also a known fact. Like I'll just ignore the rules that are not needed. So I'll just take the important rules alone. Okay, so these things we can uh, ignore it. Like you have a lot of implies when you just remove that implies, we'll have a lot and lot of rules out of it. So whatever is needed, we take that alone. So there is a breeze in 1 comma or 2 comma 1 that this, this is found. So when there is a reason to comma one, what does that implies? There is a possibility of having a pit in the nearby rooms. So either you'll have a pit in one comma one or a pit will be there in two comma two or a pit will be there in three comma one. Okay, so how can we convert this rule into one CNF structure? You can write it as negation B21 or P11 or P22 or P31. Okay, so this is the rule that we can take it out of this. 
Okay, and it is also given that there is no breeze in one comma two. That implies there is no pit in one comma one, and there is no pit in. There is no breeze here, right? There is no pit in one comma one, two comma two, and three comma one. Two comma two, and there is no pit in one comma three. So this is also given. And when you want to, and there is no breeze in. Uh, one comma two. This is also given. So with by combining these two rules, we can write it as uh, either you can directly write convert these rules into this structure CNF structure, or you can apply your uh, modus ponens rule. I'll apply both. So here I will be. So here I have converted that into your CNF structure. So next I'm going to confuse your modus ponens rule for writing negation p one one and negation p two two and negation p one three. Okay, again, this can be derived using your AND elimination rule. I can write it as P11 is true, negation P22 is true, and negation P313 is also true. Okay, now the goal that is needed is to find whether you have a pit in 1, 3. So P31 is the goal that is needed. So according to your resolution, what we do, we take the negation of the goal that is needed, negation of P31, add it to the knowledge base that we have here. And we are going to find the resolution out of it. So we take any one statement that consists of P13. So this is a place where I have P, uh, sorry, P31. I take this, I start from this rule. You can start from any rule applying all this, somewhere applying this negation of uh, the goal that is needed. It has to get nullified. Okay, so let me take this place, negation of P21 or P11 or P22 or P31. I'm trying to nullify this using the given statement. Now you have B21. So it is given that B21 is already true. By combining this, we cannot have B21 and negation of B21 to be true. So the possibility is either P11 or P22 or P31 is true. Okay, and it is given that there is no pit in 11. So negation of P11 is proven to be true. There is no possibility of P11 and negation of P11 to be true in the same possible states. So I can write it as P22 or P31. And it is also given that there is no possible pit in 22. So by combining these two rules, we cannot have P22 and negation of P22 to be true. So I take it as P31. Okay, so P31. And according to the rule that we have added here, it is it states that there is no pit in 31. Okay, so it is not possible. There is there's no possibility of having P31 and negation of P31 to be true in the same place. Okay, so with that, we say that the contradiction rule that we have taken is false. So this means that there is a pit in P31. Okay, so this is how we apply a resolution. So what all the steps that are involved in a resolution? We take any statement or a scenario or a knowledge base, convert the knowledge base into a CNF structure and take the reverse of the goal that is needed. Take the rule, negate the rule, add it to the knowledge base. Okay, so now this will result into a set of knowledge base. A resultant class will be there. Now you have to take the rules that has a related content related to the goal and we try to combine the rules. These are all your conjunctive normal form. Everything is connected using and actually means uh, all the statement has to be true. Okay, so that we are going to find a resolution graph such that it derives to a nullified state somewhere. Okay, so this is your empty rule. Finally, it derives to an empty rule. So we say that the value that we have taken, the additional input that we have put up to the knowledge base is false. Okay, take the reverse of it and prove it. So this is how we go ahead with resolution in a proportional logic or a predicate logic statement. Thank you.